The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar this week. My name is Tanya, and I'm the Marketing Manager over here at Strexoft Solutions. So just for those of you who are new with us today, um, our STAR Solution MWF, which stands for uh, Metal Wood Framer, is our Revit-based BIM framing solution that allows users to automate Revit walls, floors, ceilings, and trusses in like H steel and also in wood. So today it'll, it'll be a short but sweet, approximately 20 minute webinar. Our MWF expert, Alex, will be walking you through how to apply detailed callouts for bearing beam headers in MWF. So this includes how to import a DWG detail for bearing beams, how to create different callouts for bearing beam types, how to apply DWG callouts to shop drawings, and then also how to use the Semco detail, uh, detail selector. So just before we get going, I'd like to remind everyone that if we have time at the end of the webinar, we'll be taking a couple of live questions. In order to be selected, please press the raise hand button on the dashboard. Just please also make sure that your mic is working correctly. Um, if you'd rather, you can also ask questions throughout the webinar by typing into the questions tab of the GoToWebinar dashboard. All right, that's it for me. I'm gonna hand off to Alex now. All right, thank you, Tanya. Welcome everybody to this week's webinar. Uh, as Tanya mentioned, we're gonna be looking at the detail callout tool and as well as a tool that we already have set up basically uh, in MWF here, it's the, the Semco detail selector. So some of you may be uh, using some of the, the members from this, this company. So when you're creating your panels, uh, you have the ability to actually use their stud finder um, and use the Semco you know, members. But if, if you're not, it's not a problem. This tool is still available basically to get some details for the top of panel um, detailing. So we're gonna look at these two different tools today. Um, one of the first things we're gonna do is look at adding our bearing beam uh, to the top of our openings uh, or at the top of the panel. Um, so you may already know how to do this, but we're still gonna look at it real quick, which is gonna help our setup. So I already have one here created on top of this uh, door. So we're gonna go through the two methods using this panel here that has three windows. So there's two ways basically to get your uh, bearing beam option uh, inside of your panel. You can either use one of our markers or you can actually just create your panel and then go to the bearing option in the miscellaneous tab of the properties. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this. I'm gonna use my light gauge template and create. All right, so this is inside now, this is done. So as I mentioned, um, I'm gonna go ahead now and use the actual um, miscellaneous bearing option right here. So you can go to edit and this will pop up. So you got your bearing ban panel uh, dialog box. Now, from here, uh, we have three different configurations. So we've got type A, which is what you're seeing right here. If I switch to type B and I just select somewhere over here, the image will change. So we have a different connection. And you also have type C, which, oops, if I just click here, which basically just has these beam brace at the top. So today uh, I'm gonna be using type A and type B for the examples. Um, and what we're gonna be doing is basically getting a DWG uh, file to come into our Revit project and use it for the detail callout. So my details for this example are not uh, very detailed. Uh, they're just gonna be basic shapes, basically showing what the, the build is. Uh, but again, if you have something created with a lot of notes or some, some information tied to the bearing beam, uh, this tool is gonna come in handy. So right here on the left side, um, we can assign the bearing beam to take the entire length of the panel, we can do all spans, which is going to cover window one, window two, and window three. Or you can go ahead and just select which ones of these openings uh, that you want the bearing beam to uh, go over. Once this is done, 
you come on this side, these are all the families basically creating uh, the beam tracks, braces, cripples. Uh, and then you can decide where the placement is. Is it the top of the opening or at the top of the panel? And as I mentioned before, and then you would select your type. So this is one method of getting the bearing beam inside of your panel. And the other one is actually to just use our markers. So I go ahead and do apply opening type. There's already one here, but I want to change it to the default. And I'm going to go and change a little bit uh, of the settings. So right here, you have the bearing beam option. And basically, it's the exact same window as we just saw. Uh, the only thing is, is you got to make sure to actually have this selected. And then this is going to allow you to do the exact same choices that we were just looking at. OK, and then this will get your bearing beam inside. So I'm going to exit this for two seconds. Okay, so that's phase uh, one, basically. So as I said, we'll use this panel here that already has a bearing beam on top of the door. And what we can do next is actually get those details uh, into our project. So under the settings uh, drop-down menu, we have project detail callouts. So if I just hover over this, text will come out. So um, if you have DWGs of header built-ups, uh, you can associate them to an opening marker type. I okay, guess so this is what we're going to look at. I'm going to select this. Let me just bring the window over here. I already have two of these created, but uh, I'll just show you real quick what we can do. I'm going to call this detail zero. That's fine. And then you'll notice here uh, your import type. Uh, it's only DWG right now. And then you'll have to basically select the path uh, to where these files are. So this should bring me right to where mine are. I would pick my type A or my type B, depending on the bearing beam uh, setup that I selected. Uh, so let's go ahead and just take A. So this would associate it to this detail. Then you can decide to change the colors. You can invert them uh, depending which your DWG file was, uh, how it was created. And then you can turn it black and white or just leave it as is. And then we have the scale factor. So it's going to be important, obviously, to keep track uh, if you're working in Revit, where your shop drawings are going to be, and then how the DWG file was saved um, to be on the same scale factor. But if, you know, for whatever reason, like in my case, I think mine are actually pretty large. Uh, so I actually have to put the scale factor down to 0.05 is what I had done. Oops. So this would be one method, basically, of getting the detail in at the right size. Uh, and then we have rename export and import your detail setting. So everything that you're going to have created here, you can export and import them into different projects. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. All right, so now we're going to go see where we're actually placing these. So if I go into my door and I go look at the marker that's associated to it, go back into the bearing beam option, you'll notice here we have this detail reference ID. So if I drop down uh, the little menu here, we'll see my detail 0, 1, and 2. And this is where I'll be able to select which detail is going to be tied to this. So uh, I'll pick the one that I just created. So now this is associated to this panel. I'm going to hit OK and OK. So this is in, inside of here. Now what we're going to do is actually go manage our uh, shop drawing settings. I'm just going to use the default one that we have. And you'll notice here I have my detail type A for the different views. So we're used to, obviously, the framing elevation uh, schedules and such. So what you're going to do if you don't have a detail view option created, you're just going to hit the plus sign. And you're going to go into view and select details. Once this is selected, I'm just going to cancel out. You'll get this. And you can change the name uh, to the detail of your choice, obviously, if I'm using type A, for example. And then you'll come in here and just set up your, your viewport. So a title with line, um, the detail level, I'm gonna keep it on fine, visual style. And we also have another preferred scale right here. So if ever you weren't sure when you just imported the DWG, like I, I selected before where I put 0.05, you can always come in here and adjust your view uh, by just selecting one of the scales that are in here. This is good and it's set up. And then we're gonna go to the sheet layout property to make sure that we have uh, 
our view uh, placed into one of the locations. So I place it in the upper right zone. You could put it on the left side if you wanted. I can hit OK. So now my shop drawings are set up. And what I can now do is actually grab my panel, go here, and generate my shop drawing. <clears throat> Once this is created, it's actually going to open up the drafting view up here. Um, we're going to get to see the detail. As I mentioned, I just have a very easy detail basically to show the way that the, um, the bearing beam is uh, set up. So I can close this and actually go to my sheet. Uh, so this is panel 316. And then if I just open this up, you'll see here the drafting view that we were just looking at. Close this and open up my sheet. So first thing you'll notice, um, a little bit big, but you can always move this around or like I said, make it a little bit smaller if needed. Uh, but this is how you get that into your shop drawing. And you'll notice here, I also have the call out uh, information. So A is gonna be associated to this one right here. Uh, if you had, you know, like I was saying, the panel before where we had the three different windows, if there were different types of bearing beams being used, um, you can actually have a couple of these show up in your drawing. Okay, so let's back out of this. So that was one of the options. As I mentioned before, obviously there's a type A and type B. Uh, so we can always change this to um, the other option that we have. So if I just go into the opening type here, and select type B. And then I would select my detail that I brought in, my DWG detail, uh, to have this representation in the callout. All right. So that's how you get those in uh, for the bearing beams. Uh, it's not that complicated. Uh, as I mentioned before, once you bring them in, they'll be saved to the project. And then you can always uh, export uh, or import to different projects if you're going to be using the same details. And then again, if you guys are creating views uh, with your own details, you can always drag those views into our sheets here. So let me just open this up again. So you could always drag one of these views that you've created your own detail in Revit, for example, to have it showcased. But this is a nice, easy, quick way um, to bring in your DWG details for your bearing beam options. Now, the other thing we're going to look at today, as I mentioned, um, if I select this panel, the Semco tool. So some of you may be familiar with this, but when you look at the stud options here, we actually have specific um, manufacturers that you can use uh, their families to basically create your panels. So we've got a couple of them in here, but uh, it's not a necessity to have this uh, if you're just looking for a detail of a specific setup basically for the top of panel. I will show you how to do this uh, right down here. So one thing would be to update the database. Now this tool uh, has been around for a little bit now. I don't know if they've added anything uh, new in the past few years, but uh, a lot of the details will be available still. So you can update, make sure you have the latest. And let's go ahead and tie this to our panel. So first thing you're going to do is go under tools. Uh, we have something here called the no-fly zone. So I'm just going to let that open up there. OK, so again, um, particular wall cannot have any elements either over it or along its sides. The no-fly zone can be placed. So we use this for class detection. Uh, and in this case, we'll use it to create a detail. So I'm going to put this. Oops, sorry. You actually have to click on the Revit wall not the MWF panel. Go here and we go no fly zone. And then you can set this up as they were just mentioning. You can have it on the side of the wall or you can have it at the top of the wall. Use walls width, place above it. Uh, and then you can go ahead and add extra uh, lengths. So the height, okay. And then you can hit okay. And this is going to add a green uh, box, basically in the location that I just set up. So now I have my no-fly zone. Once we select this, 
we can go back into the tool here for Semco under the detail selector. Let me just bring this over. Okay. So what we have here is a list of basically all the, the different setups that we have. Now, might be a little bit hard right now to see the image. Um, it's a little bit uh, unclear, I think, because of the size of the screen. Um, but what we can do is go into wall types and say, okay, I'm looking for my standard walls, or it could be a shaft wall. So let me pick this. You'll notice the list is getting smaller. Uh, you could say the hourly fire rating, one hour, two hours. Wall position. Okay, so you have a big list here. Perpendicular I-beam penetration, a stairwell slab. So a lot of stuff that you can select basically to filter. Connection joint concrete, under beam, joint protection, and then you have the UL uh, file number. So if you already knew um, which file it was, you can always just select this and it'll pop it up. And then what you can do from here, I'm just gonna go through a couple of these just to show you the different details that we got. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and select this, um, the standard wall off-centered under the beam. Then you get the title here. So once this is selected, I can hit okay. This is actually going to tie it to the snowfly zone now. And the next step would be to do the import details. When you hit import details, we're going to get a dialog box right here that we can set up. Uh, so let's call this the detail selector. Okay, the scale, I'm gonna leave it as is. Uh, the viewports, title with lines, no title. Okay, set this up as you want. The name of the master sheet, uh, I'm gonna leave it as master sheet. Basically, this is where if you had three to 10 no fly zones where you assign details to them, you can have it, uh, all 10 of those details populate this master sheet. So I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, and then you can use the title block. So I can use the MWF one, uh, just the default one that Revit has given us. And then you can check your offsets and uh, adjust your margins. Once this is good, I hit import. Okay, crafting drafting view. I think this is good now. So similar to what we we're doing just before, it's gonna open up a detailed view once again. So I got that one, um, detail come in and once this is in we'll go see our sheets here and they have the master sheet created i would have to fix where the location is so this is my number one detail it came in here now uh as i was mentioning if i had three to you know 10 details this would actually come in one next to the other uh, to populate your master sheet and because of the uh the detail number it's going to be similar to what I just did before with the detail callout tool from MWF, where you'd get um, a tag basically that represents the number on your master sheet. Yeah, so you'd be able to head over to that page and look at them. And then let's just go back over here. And then once the no-fly zone is created, if you needed to change it, uh, instead of just removing it uh, and then recreating it, the Semco tool lets you remove detail. So I can actually remove the detail that's been applied to this and take it out of it, All right? So that will allow you uh, basically to reassign a, a new detail at this point. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, so it was kind of a, a bit of a shorter webinar for this week, uh, a little refresher based on how to get some details in there for um, the top of panel or using the bearing beam options. Now, again, you don't necessarily need to be using the uh, Semco families uh, to get this in. Uh, this is available basically in the tools drop down menu right here at the bottom. So hopefully this comes in handy for you guys. Uh, if you need a hand basically setting this up, feel free to reach out to the team. Uh, and I'm going to give this back to Tanya for her to close up for today's webinar. Awesome, thank you, Alex. Um, so 
we'd like to open the floor open to all of you. If there are any questions that would like to be posed live, please go ahead and place uh, and raise your hand now by clicking on the hand icon in the control panel. Just please also make sure that your mic is working correctly. And just while we wait for any questions to come through, just like to remind everyone that the recording of the presentation will be sent through tomorrow. As always, please feel free to share the recording with any colleagues. And um, if you're looking for the recording a little earlier, uh, you can usually find it at the end of the day um, across our social media channels. All right, I'm just gonna give it a couple of seconds, see if there are any um, hands that are raised. All right, great. Uh, so that looks like it's a wrap for today. Uh, for any follow-up questions after the session has been closed, please feel free to get in touch with us. Our contact details will be provided along with the recording tomorrow. Um, as well as if you'd like to set up a one-on-one -on -one demonstration, we'd be happy to get that set up for you. All right, we'll now be ending the webinar. I just want to say thank you to Alex and also thank you to everyone who registered. Have a great day.